Alright, what's going on guys? So last month, a free-to-play pixel art monster taming MMORPG had launched, and due to the timing of the launch, with it being a couple of days between TOT and the Thaumaturge, we didn't really have time to dive into it. At the time, the game had also launched with a massive wave of negative reviews, and still has a mostly negative rating on Steam at this point in time. Early reviews of this game have labeled it as pay to win, grindy, shameless, and the list goes on. You can see for yourself on Steam, but I decided to dive into the game more recently because from what I've understood, there have been some pretty significant changes to the game thus far, and I wanted to sort of go into it with an open mind without taking those negative reviews with me while diving in. That said, today we're going to find out if Dual Revolution really is that bad. So without further ado, sit back, relax, subscribe for daily monster taming videos, and let's dive in. Okay, so for context, I've mostly played the early game thus far, which is the portion of the game that I find the most negative reviews on, and I'm going to be talking about some of my criticisms and praise and then sort of give you guys my opinion at the end. So first of all, while the game has been adjusted from what I understand, there are still some criticisms that I think are valid and permeate to this day. The game starts out like your typical monster taming game. You go find your starter, learn how to catch stuff, and then you're sort of on your own from there. The problem, however, is that when you start out, you're actually level two, which is the same level, if not lower than the levels you'll find in the first route in the grass, which makes the game grindy for no reason. I don't believe being under leveled is necessarily a challenge because you could still beat the enemy in the grass with relative ease, at least with the fire starter, that's who I chose. It's more just a fact that after I beat an enemy, my HP is low, so I have to run back to the healing station, rinse and repeat. The game does have healing pads that you can actually set on a route in order to have a half an hour of basically heals right next to you, but these are a limited resource and cost real currency in order to get more of. The capture rates for monsters are also quite low, even the monsters on the second route at a very low HP still only have like a 10 to 15% chance to catch. And considering the fact that you need coins in order to buy more of the capture devices, which you get from beating trainers and stuff, it can slowly become a chore if you're using five to six capture devices per capture, though I've been relatively lucky so far. You can, however, get better cubes that cost real money. And now's probably a good time to talk about the game's monetization system, because again, it's a free to play game. So you know, there's a catch. The game, like a lot of MMOs, has a premium currency that you can utilize in order to buy certain items that may or may not be advantageous to you. There are, of course, cosmetics that you can buy, but also pay for convenience items, such as an item that will double your XP growth. Like I said, better cubes, which are the capture device, the healing stations I mentioned, which will save you a lot of time and more. Now, let me just say right off the bat, I'm not a fan of pay for convenience. I don't like the fact that just because someone wants to shell out more money, which oftentimes people spend more money than a game would actually cost, but that just automatically gives them a bunch of better stuff than me a lot faster. On the flip side, when a game is free to play, this type of stuff is pretty common. And considering that this is also a mobile game, it's kind of par for the course. And at least as of the time I'm putting this video together, which is a month out of launch, it does seem like they've adjusted a lot of things on the monetization end. So it's not as bad as it was on release. I know they've made a few items in the shops cheaper, and again, while I'd prefer that the monetization was only cosmetic, I can't harp too much on a solo dev trying to monetize an aspect of their game, especially when it's an MMORPG where there are server costs and constant updates. Some of my other complaints or criticisms about the game aren't really deal breakers. I don't like that there's a stamina bar when you're running because it's not like it's a platformer like Cassette Beasts. It just seems unnecessary. I think that there can be a little bit of jank when trying to talk to people, and I've seen a few frame rate drops here and there despite me having a 4060. Now, despite some of the issues that the game definitely has, which will hopefully be ironed out as development progresses, there are actually a few aspects to the game that I quite like. First of all, the combat system is sort of like an ATB or active time battle in that you gain energy over time and then can execute your attacks. The combat is actually semi-real time, which is a nice change of pace since most monster taming games follow the same HP and stamina bar system that is turn-based and not too dissimilar from Pokemon. The game also actually feels like an MMO, more so than a lot of the MMOs we've seen in the genre. Right now, you can find Easter eggs scattered throughout the game because it's April and you can hand some of these eggs in for prizes. It's nice to have like a little event like that. I will say some of the prizes are kind of overpriced, but it's still a cool thing and there are other aspects to this game too, like the two-man dungeons where you need two people to navigate a cave system that is an optional area. Stuff like this makes the game feel a little more connected than just having everybody running around 
around doing their own thing. There is also a battle arena where you can enter to challenge either humans or bots, and it's really non-invasive. You just walk into the room and then queue up, and that makes the game feel a little more alive. I can't speak for how the game originally launched. There are a ton of negative reviews, like I said, but I think at this point in time, at least from what I've played thus far, the game's not perfect. It definitely has grind issues, which I hope they try to circumvent a little bit, but it's definitely worth giving a shot because it's free to play, and it seems like the developers have actually been listening to feedback and criticism, which is really important in these types of live service games. So is Dual Revolution that bad? Honestly, no. I'm not going to say it's the best monster taming game to ever grace the surface of the earth, but I think that if the game had launched in its current state right now, the reviews would at least be mixed, if not positive, versus the overwhelming amount of negative reviews that have about 20 minutes of playtime. You might enjoy this game, you might not, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's free, so might be worth giving a shot. Anyways, guys, if you want to learn more about monster taming games, definitely subscribe to this channel. We put out new monster taming videos every single day. You can also check out my Twitter, Discord, Patreon channel memberships and more linked below. And special thanks to our supporters, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Candy Maruncy, Tragsoft, and Nemo. And I'll see you next time. Peace.